Today's video is sponsored by Earth Breeze. Isn't this Namija the cutest thing? I just noticed this pot was moving. Hello, Mr. Toad. Are you living in my Namija pot? What are you doing? Okay, you can live there. Okay, that's gonna be his home now. Hi, flower friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And today I thought it was about darn time that I came on here and gave you guys an update really of the entire spring, both here at the nursery and back home at the farm. And I can tell you that even though we had one of the worst things possible happen to us this spring with losing grandpa, um, we did really have some bright spots and grandpa was here for so many of them. I want to talk to you guys about how the spring, my first season here at the nursery went, how my fifth season at the farm is going so far, and uh, basically some of the highs and the lows throughout the season. I can tell you that this is basically all I have left here at the nursery. Um, we really learned so much. We learned what people are looking for, what color people, what colors people want, what they don't want, what I need to order more of, what I need to order less of, uh, what I need to grow more of. And um, all of those things are in my brain bank and I'm going over them because believe it or not, I'm making orders right now for next year. So let's go back to Mother's Day because guys, I haven't even updated you on how Mother's Day weekend went. So I have a lot of clips that I'm gonna be inserting here that I did record throughout the season. So let's go back to Mother's Day and take a look at how that went the first spring at the nursery. Hi, flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and it is Mother's Day and yesterday was absolute chaos. I'll get to that later on in this video. I really wanted to make a video about yesterday we were just absolutely swamped. So I'm going to do my best today. I'm hosting a Mother's Day tulip bouquet bar and we have, oh, we have the pretties to choose from guys. I am so excited about what we have to offer here, including La Bella Pac. I had some tulips that were okay. And then I brought some tulips in from my friend, Erin from Little Ann's Flower Farm. She's in Canada, Harry. She grew these amazing dream touch, those Red one, whoop, right here. Red ones and orange ones are hers as well. And this bucket over here is hers as well. I think she may have gave me some Angelique. I think she did give me some Angelique. A lot of the Angelique is mine. A lot of it is hers. These La Bella Pac is mine. The orange bucket over there. Those are my babies. And guys, we have some amazing flowers here. And I just pulled these last night because I panicked. So I have these beautiful ones that I just pulled from the field last night. I've got to cut them and get them ready to go. My mother-in-law is here watering. Oh, look at these. These are phenomenal. Oh my gosh. I am so excited to get things going. These are the ones from Erin. They're so pretty. I'm not sure the exact variety, but it's gorgeous. This is some Angelique right here. And then some are already um, in bloom. These ones over here are blooming. Oh, they're so good. Okay, so people are choosing 12 stems for $20 today, which is a pretty decent price. It's not overpriced, it's not underpriced, but um, somebody's here right now, we're not open yet, but. I have some pre-made Mother's Day bouquets ready to go if anybody comes in, and I'll be making more of those throughout the day as well. I have a little station here in the corner for me. Oh, here are some of my black parrots too, guys. Oh my God, they're so good. And those are the Dior's. I think they're Dior's. There's two purple ones that I got. So this is my station. I have my paper. I have my stapler. I have rubber bands. I have my pH meter. No, that's not for today. That's just so I can check the pH of the water. And I have my flower food packets. And I'm gonna get going. I gotta move my car. Look at that. I gotta move my car and get ready to go and start washing those. We have 15 minutes until we open. It's 4.15. I'm going to go home and go to bed. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave here. Um, we went through a couple thousand tulips. We sold 
uh, cumulatively like 120 bouquets and I'm exhausted and I'm gonna go. So I will um, hop back on here and give you guys a recap um, when I'm feeling like I have a little bit more energy. <laughs> now Mother's Day was our first big weekend here at the nursery. We had, you know, sales before that. We had a big, you know, opening day, open house. But Mother's Day was the biggest sales weekend of the season here at the nursery. I ended up selling almost 500 hanging baskets just that weekend and more than 150 bouquets. It was really a fantastic weekend. Um, the community came out and supported. We had the tulip bouquet bar that was hugely popular. In fact, I increased my tulip order for next year to do that again. I really think that people love to be involved. They love to be hands-on with that. And that was fantastic. So basically after Mother's Day weekend, I had fewer than a hundred hanging baskets left. And I started to panic because I knew Memorial Day weekend, I mean, we still get frosts into late May. In fact, we had a 29 degree Fahrenheit night in late May this year. A lot of people in this immediate area do not put any annuals in the ground until after Memorial Day or Memorial Day weekend. So I knew I was kind of in trouble when it came to having enough supplies. I didn't want to have to buy product in that I didn't grow and resell it here. I really wanted to grow as much as I needed. Obviously with the space that I have, that just wasn't possible this season. Okay, so fast forward to uh, Memorial Day weekend. It started off um, emotional. That was when we realized that grandpa was taking a turn for the worse and um, the six months that they told us he had um, was gonna be much less, which we had in my brain, we were told mid-May, okay, I can't do this. We were told mid-May that he had six months and he was an amazing spirit. He was eating, he's playing cards, he's singing, he's laughing, he's joking, he's grandpa. And within just a few days, he went from the jovial, Santa Claus like man that we all knew to someone who had a hard time swallowing, who was in a tremendous amount of pain. Um, it just went so fast. So Memorial Day weekend, in my brain, I thought we had the whole entire summer to spend and maybe even the holidays to spend with grandpa. So I was plugging away here at the nursery, plugging away, plugging away, plugging away, just trying to get through Memorial Day weekend. And then I could turn my attention to grandpa because that's where I wanted to be. That's where my heart was. I mean, Memorial Day weekend, guys, that's a huge sales weekend for the nursery, but none of that mattered. None of it mattered. Um, I just needed to be at my grandparents' house with my whole entire family. Everybody was there. And uh, so Brad kicked me out of here and said, go. And that was Sunday and he passed away in the middle of the night. Um, so it was very, very quick. Um, so Memorial Day weekend sales were good, but my mind was elsewhere. I was grateful for the community support at that time, um, but I don't really, I don't really know. I wasn't really here <laughs> for a lot of that. So let's talk about the farm now for the spring. And now more about the sponsor of today's video. It's Earth Breeze. More than 700 million laundry detergent jugs end up in landfills and oceans every single year. Earth Breeze takes the plastic out of doing laundry. The packaging is compact, biodegradable, and plastic free. Their powerful eco sheets look like dryer sheets, but they're not. It's detergent that dissolves 100% in hot or cold water and can be used in any type of machine. It couldn't be easier. No measuring, just toss them in. Doing a small load? No problem, just use half a sheet. With EarthBreeze, their flexible subscription plans can be adjusted, paused, or canceled at any time without penalty. For every pack sold, EarthBreeze donates 10 loads to charity. Go to earthbreeze.com slash Flower Hill Farm to get started with 40% off. That's earthbreeze.com slash Flower Hill Farm for 40% off your subscription. Thanks to EarthBreeze for keeping me smelling pretty and for sponsoring this video. And I have to say that my hoop house was very disappointing this year. I ended up uh, losing a lot of the ranunculus, the very, um, very cold, late temperatures. And then we had a couple of very hot days. And so they, they froze and then they fried. And a combination of that, I lost about 50% of the corms that were in the hoop house. 
Uh, what else? Oh, the anemones did really well. The, all the anemones survived. I had anemones for days, but the ranunculus really didn't do well. I had two varieties that were outstanding, which was the porcelain and then the white, and those were fantastic. Also the salmon and the um, uh, champagne. So all of those did well, but I lost all the purples. I lost all the pinks. I lost all the butter yellows. All of those corms just didn't make it through the crazy weather that we were having. The campanula that I planted, it was looking good and it looked really healthy and fantastic, but then it was blooming on really short stems. So I think that I just didn't get it in the ground fast enough because they're daylight sensitive and um, they will bloom when they get to a certain number of day hours. So I just don't think I planted them early enough out there for them to get the height before they started to bloom. We did end up having a fantastic season, even though we had thousands of damaged tulips there were some doubles that were young enough that i was able to salvage a few thousand of them for sales which you saw in the bouquet bar but also my daffodils were fantastic this year and the best part about this season is that i taught my children how to harvest daffodils and to, to come home and have buckets of daffodils already harvested and them working together, that was beautiful. That was probably one of the best moments for me of the spring season is watching my kids get involved and watching them not complain about getting involved. Honestly, I couldn't have done it without all of my family's help this year. Okay, now let's fast forward to peony season. Guys, my peony field, this is year four for a lot of those peonies. So I knew I was gonna be able to harvest and I certainly did. I ended up harvesting hundreds of peonies from this young field and they were so beautiful the public was waiting for them they wanted them um, they came out in droves to get peony bouquets let's take a look at one of my smaller peony harvests guys look at this this is the first harvest i've only got two of etched salmon peony it's fantastic but honestly you can't go wrong with the peonies they look so good let me zoom out i just did a um kind of not really a big harvest but probably maybe a hundred stems um there's more on the ground there i've got to get them in another bucket i kind of ran out of room in here because i just harvested some stock and some snaps out of the hoop house wow just they're so beautiful i can't remember how many of those plants that i have but i think i need more they're phenomenal those etched salmon peonies definitely were more expensive for the tubers, but holy guacamole, they look like a David Austin rose. I was blown away by how beautiful they were. And those plants are only, I think they're only two years old. So I probably shouldn't have even cut them. And I think I have, I looked it up in my, my worksheet. I have five of those plants in the ground. So I'll never have a tremendous amount of etched salmon, but just having those special ones in there, they were beautiful. I really love them. But yeah, this is basically all that I have left. Um, it's not much. There's some coleus. Oh, the ferns, guys. Remember the baby ferns? I gotta show you how big they are now. Look how beautiful these ferns are. Uh, these are the little baby ferns that I planted. They were this big and I'm obsessed with them. They're so beautiful. Oh. I love them. But there were a lot of things that I wanted to show you guys this year and I just felt completely overwhelmed with the tasks that I was doing. Um, somehow, I had it in my head that I could run both the nursery and the farm successfully. Come to find out there are not enough hours in the day for me to do that alone. There really aren't. So I have to formulate a plan next year to, to better utilize my time and there are things that need to be done on a time frame. There needs to be things need to be done before my hanging basket material comes in because once the product comes here the hoop house is kind of an afterthought so it's definitely something that needs to be reworked next year as far as schedule of when things need to happen because i can't be in both places at once overall we had some beautiful bright spots and grandpa was able to be here to see um, just how supportive the community is and that this first season at the nursery was a success and that's i know how proud he is of me and how proud he was of me and that he's he's here i feel him everywhere here at the nursery he had his hand in every pot here all of the vegetables that i'm growing at my house right now grandpa started all those and um in desperation when i found out that grandpa was was, he was taking a turn for the worse I pulled all the plants that he started from seed and we're gonna build grandpa's garden from them. 
He started a lot of lupine, lupinis, um, hollyhocks, um, just some of those things. I pulled them and um, we're gonna use those to start a memorial garden for grandpa and uh, for any grandpa really because uh, so many of you guys have reached out. I've gotten more than a hundred greeting cards in the mail of just sympathy cards and gifts and just memories that you guys have and favorite moments that you guys have of grandpa or your own grandpa. And I realized that I wanted to create a space for us to hold on to those memories that we have with the people that we love so much. And so in the backyard, I've always talked about creating an inspiration garden there. And now um, it's not shifted too much, but it's, an, it's a memorial garden of remembrance to remember the people who were here before us and who really inspired us. So it's, it's grandpa's garden, but it's my inspiration because grandpa was such a huge inspiration to me. So it will remain an inspiration garden, um, but it's grandpa's garden. Okay. All right. I've been meaning to get to this video guys, but I gotta be honest, I've been stalling. I'm, um, busying myself with other tasks that need to be done because, um, my motivation is coming back. Let's just say that way. My motivation was low and now it's coming back and I'm very excited to bring you guys the next phase of this journey. We have construction and renovation that we want to get done here. We have new structures that we'd like to get done. I don't know if it's going to be this year because I had plans in the works to put up a new structure this year. And then the company that I was financing it with um, just kind of hit me with some surprise fees and I can't do that now. So that the greenhouse construction might not happen this year. It might be a 2024 construction. So we'll see because I really was looking forward to putting it up, but we'll see if I can make a deal with this. And I actually, I'm going to go to the bank right now to see if they can help me out with that. Coming up in the next video, I'll bring you guys to the farm, show you guys what's here at the nursery. I'm growing vegetables in the back. The mums are in the back. I've got new stuff in the hoop house at the farm and my vegetables at the farm going crazy with tomatoes guys. Over a thousand tomatoes are in the ground over there and they're looking fantastic. And then my annuals, gotta be honest, they're slow this year. So I'll bring you guys uh, up to speed on that. So just to recap here at the nursery, I basically sold out of hanging baskets before Memorial Day. That was a bad thing. I had 750 to 800 of them. I can't remember exactly how many I grew, but it was between 750 and 800. I gotta look up on my numbers and, and count that up again, but we sold out. So that was a great thing, but also not a great thing because I didn't have enough. The community kept coming looking for more hanging baskets and I just didn't have them. So they had to go elsewhere to buy, which was disappointing to me and to the customers because they wanted to support me in this adventure. So right now the nursery is closed for the season. I have a very limited supply left. It's to the point now in mid July that only I was only getting a couple customers a day. So staying open really wasn't feasible both for for me being here and for the farm, I needed to be more at the farm now. I look forward to sharing the rest of this season with you. Anyway guys, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. Look how much better I look in this lighting. It's all about lighting. <laughs> the sun was too bright for me in, uh, in the greenhouse. But yeah, maybe I should just make videos in here from now on. Oh well. Toodaloo. This, uh, that shot. Let me think that broke.